and hello everyone welcome back to another NIM tutorial today we will be looking at procedures in NIM now a procedure is usually referred to as a function in other programming languages such as C++ you would have a function or a method or in Python you have define diff which is a function or method or procedure basically all the same key words or terms to describe the same thing basically it is a word of code that can run more code for you to give you an example if we do something such as let x is equal to one two or let's make this bar x is equal to at one two and we go x dot contains and here we could build like two so this contains here is a function or in other words a procedure it runs code for us but we only need to type contains we don't need to write the code that's in here because what this basically does is it checks if the value we pass in so two is in x so it basically returns that for us it makes us it easier for us than to just type out all things. Some functions contain 10, 20 lines for us, whilst other will contain one or two extra lines, but dumped down to a single word for us to use. Let's create our own function. Say hello. And let's say proc for procedure. Again, when I say function, I am primarily talking about a procedure. There is also a func keyword in NIM, which we'll get to later on. But when I say function, method, or procedure, in general, I am talking about this procedure. That's, that's what you'll be using for the most part. And here we can just go like this and say echo, hello world. Now this function, we can just say, say hello. There we go. So this function will now be called. If we were to run this, we'll get hello world. So this function here is going to execute whatever is in here. As long as it is indented, make sure it's indented, then anything in here is part of this function and will be run. So I can call this as many times as I want and it will execute the code in here as many times as I call it. So we go like this, then as you can see, it increased a lot. You can also specify the type it returns. In this case, it would return a void, meaning it returns nothing. You can also pass in a variable that should be used in here, which is called a parameter, such as name, which is a string type, and we can default it to Nick. So let's go here and just say hello name. There we go. So now we are saying hello to the variable that is passed in, which by default would be Nick. So if we were to go here and say Nick, Jack, and Mike. So what's going to happen is this one here will default to Nick. This one here will default to Jack, and this one here will default to Mike. So we're storing the value we pass in here, which should be a string type. We're storing it inside of this variable here. And then we can use this variable only inside of this procedure. We cannot use it outside of the procedure unless we return this value, which we'll get to later on. So if we were to run this, we'll get hello Nick. By default, it is Nick. So if you don't pass anything, you'll get Nick. This is an optional trait. If you do this like that, then this will have an error because the name is required. But if you add an equal symbol here, then a name is optional or this parameter is optional. And then there's hello Jack and Mike because we passed Jack and Mike in there. A more intense example could be like the sum, getting a sum sum. So procedure sum. And then we need x and y, which is both integer. Now you could go x colon int because that's its own variable and y colon int. But because both of them are integers, you can do this and int will be inferred for x here as well. And you can put as many things here as you want. So like that, and all of these will then be considered integers. But anyhow, let's just do this. So both x and y is considered an int and it returns an integer later on. Then here we can just say return x plus y. The return keyword returns a value for us. So 
when we call this function here, in fact, if we were to go here and say, and let's make this sum x, and we were to just echo out x and y, and go void, then you'll notice the difference here. If we say echo sum 10, 1 for x and y, and then here we were to say echo sum x 9 and 1, then this one will get an error because it doesn't return anything. Unless we specify return here, and then we specify int here, it will see it as something that doesn't return anything. And when you return something, you can store it in a variable. Instead of, let's say, echo here, let's say we say let num is equal to sum 10 and 1, and we were to echo out num, then the value returned by sum will be found inside of num. So if we were to run this, we'll get 11 because 10 plus 1, which is being returned here, is stored inside of num. And num is being echoed here. And it's also good to take note that you cannot add code after return. So I can say echo begin, but if I try and go here and say echo end, we'll get an error actually because let's run this. And we'll just get begin and 11. So it will actually just say warning because unreachable code after return. Because after return, the entire function exits. So once you use return, you cannot put code after it. If you hover over here, it says unreachable code after return statement. So you can put code before this return, but once you add a return, it ends the function. You can also do function overloading, meaning you can have two functions with the same name, but does things slightly differently, such as procedure sum, but this sum takes in an x, a y, and a z value. Let's go int here. It returns an int. And here we can just say return x plus y plus z. So then it will choose which one is most relevant. So here we can also echo out sum and then 9, 4, 9. And now it uses both of these sums. This one uses the second sum, which takes x, y, and z. This sum uses the first sum, which only takes in x and y. This is called function overloading. You have two functions with the same name, but they take in the same variables, but this just a little bit differently. If we run it, we'll still get the same values. You might be wondering, could you change this into a float instead of an int? And yes, you can. So we go here say 0.3, we run it, then we get 22.9. So it has the same value, it can take in different things, but they will choose which one is most relevant. In this case, since it has two parameters here that are being passed in, it will choose this one. And both of them are integers, which also indicates that it should be this. If you were to go like this, which is float, and you remove that, it will also work because now they're just of different type. So we'll check what types these are that are being passed in. So now if we were to run this, it will still work as expected. This is called function overloading. You have functions with the same names, but they do different things. Do not overload functions carelessly, because if you overload a function carelessly, later on you might think a function does something, but then it actually does something else. So only if the functions basically do the same thing, but needs to maybe add an extra variable that you should pass in or just return a different type or take in different types. This is why often you'll see you can use things like contains with arrays, sequences, and I think tables, and all of these you can use contains, even though they you use different types. It's just overloading the function to use or to allow different types. Now you can also go and make it a little bit more complex, such as procedure, get largest value. And this takes in a values that are, that's a sequence of int. And it returns the largest integer in that sequence. Then here, we could even call a different function. So let's say we have procedure, say, hello, name, which is a string and we just echo and here we say say hello Steve 
So now you can also call a different function inside of this function. And if you, of course, if we were to echo out this, and of course it wouldn't do anything yet because it doesn't return a value yet. Although let's go like one, six, five, negative nine, negative two, 99, which will be the biggest one, obviously, and then three and four. Now it currently doesn't actually return an integer as it says it should, but we can still run it and we can get hello Steve and we'll just return zero as the default since there's no value being passed in. Now in here we can actually go and create a for loop as well. So for value in values, if value is more than result, then result equals value. Now result is a special keyword in NIM. If you come from Delphi where you have result, then you would know what I'm talking about. Basically what result does is it removes the requirement for a return statement. Like in this scenario, we could put a return statement here by just going var uns is equal to zero. And here we can just say return uns. And here we say uns and here uns. But it adds a lot of extra unnecessary code that we didn't need to use before. If we use result, we can remove this return statement and just do this because result already exists inside of any procedure that returns a value. And result will automatically return a value once the function call ends. You don't need a return to end a function call that returns a value, but you can use result to return that value. So if we were to run this, we'll get 99 as expected because result here is being given this value here and result is being returned. And you can't do this with anything. You can't say R because here R doesn't exist. Result is a special keyword, which allows you to not have to use return. And by default result, if the return type is an integer would be zero. And it will of course have a default value for each and every type of a string, it will be an empty string. But take note, this has downsides, such as if we were to pass in a sequence here with just negative values, it will return zero instead of the last or instead of that value. So what you could do is you could say result is equal to values at index zero. And this will make sure that even if they pass in values that are all underneath zero, it will still return the largest one there which is negative one in this case. And if you do this, it will still do the same thing. It will just work as well. However, if you do declare the result, such as var result is equal to zero as an example, then this will no longer be valid. If we were to run this, we'll get zero again here. Because once you redeclare or declare the variable result, this result keyword is no longer going to be used. Then you will have to go and say return result. You will have to do this at the end. So take note, if you are going to redefine result here, then you will have to reuse return. You'll even notice if I hover over it, it says special variable result is shadowed because there's a special variable that we can use, but we are overwriting it. In no it's actually recommended to use result wherever possible instead of return. Personally, I feel you should use return wherever and result when you feel like it. It's up to you which you use. On the end of the day, NIM is basically created in a way that everyone can be satisfied in some way, such as I can go here and say echo, and let's just copy this here. I can go like this, and I can say get largest value. And I believe that should also still work perfectly fine, as you can see. NIM is made in such a way that basically no matter who you are and what you prefer, your preference is most likely going to be allowed in here. So if you don't want to use result, if you're like me and you prefer using return because it makes the code more clear for you, then use return. If you prefer using result because you don't want to use return or you just think it looks better, use result instead. I personally find my code to be less buggy if I use return because I might forget about results and forget to update it where I need to and whatnot. I'd rather manage the return myself. Now there's still a lot to talk about when it comes to procedures. So I'm going to split this tutorial up into a couple of parts. Thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. 
and I will see you all again in the next NIM tutorial.